Hi everyone, Neuralar here, and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and review on the Cobra CPI 2575 2500 watt 12 volt to 120V power inverter. Now, I had done an earlier video on the CPI 2550, that's their older model. The 2575 has since replaced that model, and they just increased the model number to something a little bit bigger, because bigger numbers are better, right? Well, we'll see. But it should have more modern technology and hopefully a little bit better performance. It does have a lower price point, and that's always good. But let's first take a look at the box. Here's the front of their retail packaging, CPI 2575. You see that it does have a USB outlet in it, and they show you a picture of the product on the front, of course. Hopefully this is representative of the product inside. A lot of times on cheap electronics, it's not. We'll find out. And you can see the different markets that they're advertising to here. Obviously, truck drivers are one of their biggest markets. Take a look at the uh, side of the box. Not a whole lot here. Not much there. The bottom's pretty bland. The front shows a few statistics. 2,500 watts, continuous power. Now, does continuous mean that it'll do that indefinitely or for a certain period of time? A lot of times it only do their continuous power for a short period of time before they overheat. We'll see about this one. 5,000 watts peak. That is going to be untrue. It always is on these. USB outlet, volt watt meter. I don't know how accurate that is. Remote on off capable. Capable means it's not included and almost nobody buys it so basically there's no remote. Heavy duty construction. Yeah, I bet. Everybody says that. Three outlets. They're just in parallel so it's irrelevant. Capable of handling multiple loads. Yeah, you can charge two phones at once. Who knows what that means. And uh, I do believe that they have some information on this side. Yes, they do have a table. And another picture of the product. I'll zoom in on this table a little bit. Here they show the different protections that it has. They claim that it's thermally protected. They almost always are because they overheat after continuous use. Reverse polarity, that's just a byproduct of the product design. They all have that. The fuses blow. That's just how they're made. Over voltage shutdown, they all have that. Low voltage shutdown, they all have that. And low voltage alarm. Pretty typical stuff. So over here they have a table of the number of watts that different appliances draw. Pretty useless in my opinion. Some people like that, but you know what? All your products have nameplates on them. Just look at that. What they don't mention is the surge necessity. For example, they show a one-half horsepower submersible sump pump, 1400 watts. Well, you know what? That's irrelevant. All that matters is how much it takes to start it. And I have my, I have my doubts that this inverter would start a one-half horsepower submersible sump pump. But, I don't know. We'll get on to the review here, but before I open the box, here are some specifications. And I noticed right away something interesting. Continuous power, 2500. Surge power, 3000. Really? I thought it was 5,000 peak. Well, now they say 3,000 surge. What does surge mean? I don't know. They don't define it. In any case, that's already a inconsistency in their specifications. But 3,000 maybe is honest. I guess we'll find out. Modified sine wave. Everything else in here is pretty typical. They give you some voltage ranges. Low voltage alarm. Low voltage cutoff. The no load current at 0.6 amps is fairly low. That's good. Warranty, weight, etc. Well, let's open the box and see what's inside. Now, to be fair to the inverter, before I show you this inverter, I should qualify that this particular inverter is not new, it is used. I've been looking for a CPI 2575 for a while now because I wanted to take a look at one. They're a very common inverter, they're very low price. You can get one for around $100. But I didn't want to pay full price because I don't like doing that with electronics. So I finally found an inverter that was broken. And I bought a broken inverter. Cosmetically, it's supposed to be about new, but this particular one requires repairs. And I'm going to, hopefully, repair it and show you how I do that. If you're not interested in the repair section, go ahead and just skip past that and get to the review. But uh, I just wanted to qualify that before we get into the unboxing. Alright, let's see what's in the box here. I'll open it up, and hopefully it's as advertised. And good. Looks like all the packaging is in here. They give you a product registration card just in case you want them to annoy you with advertising media, and a manual. But I'll set those aside for now. What's more interesting to most people is the product itself. And the box is now empty. 
Looks like the packaging is pretty typical of any inverter. They just have these foam pieces on both sides and a plastic bag. I have no complaints about that. It's packaged reasonably well. The cardboard in the packaging is fairly cheap, but uh, just don't buy a box with a hole in it and you should be alright. So here is the actual product. And it does look about as advertised, which I'm happy with. And the first thing that anyone who is familiar with inverters is going to notice is that it is 100% plastic. This is plastic, this is plastic. These things that look like heat sinks, they're not heat sinks, that's just decoration. This is plastic. Everything on it is plastic. These look like they might be vents or something, or I don't know what they might look like. All it is is some screening put into this hole. There's no functionality here at all. It's just for decoration. I don't know why they'd waste their money on that. And uh, on the bottom, this looks to be stamped steel, just like almost all other inverters. The feet on here are not rubber, they are hard plastic. So if you mount this in a vehicle where there's lots of vibration, you may have vibration failures. I'd recommend putting on some sort of compliant mount rather than just screwing this directly to a steel frame. And uh, you can actually see inside the inverter a little bit, but I'm not going to show you that right now because I'm going to be taking this bottom off and showing you all the details inside. Here's the input side of it. There's dual fans. It looks like they blow into the unit. So they blow in. Air would come out of these vents then. And these are dual, what appears to be four gauge lugs for positive and negative. I'm not sure if it is required to connect cables to both of these yet, but at four gauge that's not enough for 2500 watts. So most likely you're going to have to connect dual cables anyway. It has a tiny little ground lug I think it's pretty clear that they don't actually intend you to be grounding this because nobody ever does that, even though you're supposed to. And besides, this whole thing's plastic, so it's kind of irrelevant. Except the bottom, but the bottom is fully isolated because it's just screwed into plastic. So grounding is pretty pointless on this. But, in any case, the other side here... Huh. That's interesting. Do I have the right model? Let's see... CPI 2575, it says right here, so I must have the right model, but this is kind of confusing because... Hmm, this is the picture on the box. If I can get them both in frame without glare. And uh, does that look like this product? No, there's a fan over here. This display is further to the right. Obviously they changed the design of the product and didn't update their packaging. This is pretty typical of cheap consumer grade electronics. They change their design whenever they feel like, when there's lower cost components that come in, when they have a cost reduction on their design and whatnot. And a lot of times, what's advertised in the box is not what you get inside. That's very clearly what's going on here, because that does not match. I'm going to be checking the manual now to see if that even matches this product next. But uh, there's not a whole lot to say here. They have one fan here that looks like it vents out toward me, which is interesting. Um, we'll see about that. Here's the remote port. It's a typical RJ11 style jack. I'm sure you can use anybody's remote, but uh, there's just a couple pins in here that you short together to turn it on. USB port, they don't advertise how much current that can handle, but it'll be a 5 volt USB port. And it does have a meter on here, which is nice. It looks like an LED meter rather than LCD. That's uh, cheaper to make, but that's just fine with me. Let's take a quick look at the manual that they give you. This is a pretty small manual. There's not a lot in it, just a few fold-out pages. And here they have a picture of their product. And you can see that this picture matches the box, and it does not match the actual product. It is different. Always a bad sign. It does appear that this whole manual is in English, so they must ship a different language to each region. That's always a good thing. Here they mention that certain appliances will not work on modified sine wave. It's good that they mention that. They mention a few basics of the difference between modified sine and pure sine. Here they mention some of the different operating indicators. So apparently the display on it toggles between uh, output power and input voltage. We'll see how that works. Current overload protection is different from short circuit protection, which is nice, so it'll tell you if you have something wired up wrong or not. 
low and high input voltage notification. Live reverts will just shut off. This one will actually tell you and continue display, and that's nice. Over temperature, and here we are, power output. The manual claims that this inverter can do 2,500 watts for one hour, and then it must cool for 15 minutes before it can continue. And that's pretty good if it really does that, because realistically, drawing 250 amps out of a battery bank for an hour, that requires a pretty large battery bank, and no alternator can keep up with that. So in reality, almost nobody is going to be doing this. They also mentioned that this inverter won't start some loads within its power requirements because the surge rating may be high. And there's also some inconsistencies in this manual, which I don't like seeing. Over here, they mentioned, uh, let me zoom in quick a minute. Here they mentioned the acceptable input voltage range, 10.5 volts plus or minus 0.3, an audible low voltage warning so will sound. The inverter will shut down if it drops to 9.5 volts plus or minus 0.3. Hmm, and here they say 15.5 volts plus or minus one half volt. It'll shut down due to over voltage protection. However, if you go to the specifications, you'll notice that these voltage ranges don't match what was on the previous page. That's not a good sign either. They have some temperature ranges, they have an efficiency. This efficiency is low, but I'm hoping that they're just more honest than others, and not that it's any lower than anybody else's. Continuous output rating for 1 hour, 2500 watts, I have my doubts, but we'll see. Surge rating for 0.1 seconds, meaning it doesn't surge at all, 5000. You remember on the bottom of the inverter, it said 3000, so that's somewhat inconsistent there. And right here on that previous page that I would showed you, low voltage protection. Here they have different voltage ranges yet again for the alarm and shutdown voltage. Nothing in this manual matches. So, I'm not sure if they kept doing design changes, if the documentation is just poor, or if things change all the time in their product, and they just don't update the manual consistently. In any case, I wouldn't trust anything in here because nothing is consistent, and it doesn't even match what this thing looks like. The picture in the manual is completely different from the product. So, we'll take a look at the product next, but as I mentioned, this does not work, and I have tried firing it up powering it up, and it doesn't power up at all, it's completely dead. So let's take the back off and take a look inside. It looks like there's six screws, I already took a couple of them out, just holding this back panel on. I'll take that off and show you what's inside. 